Hi, <clears throat> hi everyone. Welcome, welcome to Liz Real Talk. All right. Well, first of all, thank you everyone for uh, responding to my uh, request for help this afternoon. I received a, a fake email, someone with ill intention, you know, telling me that YouTube has terminated my my channel, and I reacted. So I, and then later I, I realized it was a it was a fake email because the email address didn't look right. But that I got sidetracked from preparing for this live stream uh, because I spent some time trying to figure out what I would do if my channel was um, was uh, terminated. But anyways, it was a false alarm. So, well, thank you everyone for for writing to me. All right, so let's see what we can do today for. Um, <laughs> given that I have limited time to prepare for this. But we'll talk about BYD and Tesla last year in the early of in the early months of 2023. That's more than a year now. Yeah. I did two live streams, uh, two live streams comparing Tesla and BYD, and they were quite detailed. So now I want to do a follow-up um, because you know things have changed. Uh, we all know that exporting China's excess industrial uh, capacity is one of Beijing's strategies to revive its economy. And Jenna Yellen was just in China to address the problem, right? to address the concern that the American government has uh, with China's unfair, this type of unfair trade practices. Uh, China's commerce minister, Wang Wentao, is in Europe right now. Uh, to address Europe's probe into Chinese EV makers' um, unfair, you know, pricing uh, practices by having, uh, you know, extraordinary government subsidies. Um, so it appears that the Chinese, given by what uh, Wang Wentao has signaled in Europe, it looks like China is ready to fight a trade war, uh, at least in Europe. Um, at, at the forefront of this EV war is Tesla and BYD. Um, Tesla is the world's leading EV maker and an American company, while BYD is China's leading EV maker. Um, now, uh, this in, in early January, when news came out that during the last quarter of 2023, BYD officially surpassed Tesla to become the world's largest pure EV maker by producing 42,000 more cars ahead of Tesla. It created so much media attention, not just in China, but also in the West. Um, Elon Musk was forced to respond on X, saying that compared with traditional automakers, Tesla's positioning is closer to that of an AI and robotics company. Um, although BYD lost to Tesla um, in, uh, in total sales in Q1 2024, right? so that was the last quarter of 23, in the following quarter, the first quarter of this year, BYD lost to Tesla. But the momentum the Chinese EV makers enjoy seem, um, seems to overshadow or to be overshadowing Tesla. Um, and on January 25th, Tesla released its financial report for 2023. Although it delivered 1.8 million EVs, uh, it, which is a 38% increase from last year, with total revenue up 19%, and it reached the total revenue reached almost 90, uh, 97 billion dollars. Net profit was down 23% from the previous year. Tesla retained its position as the global leader in the in the pure EV because BYD was closely behind with 1.57 million cars delivered. Um, that's pure EV. Um, then four days later on January 29th, I think in an effort to keep the, the, the good narratives, the, the publicity momentum it has created for itself um, in the early days of January, in, in an effort sort of to respond uh, Tesla's less than satisfactory financial results, BYD released its pro forma financial statement for the year. It's, I think it's, it was a forecast, it was not final. The numbers looked so illustrious 
that they outshine Tesla's bottom line by many folds. BYD expected its net profit uh, to, clo to be close to 30 billion yuan, a year-over-year -year increase over 80%, and basic earnings per share uh, at 10 yuan per share compared to 5, 5.7 yuan last year. That's a over 40% increase. And BYD's total sales for the year reached 3 million, 3.02 million vehicles with a growth of nearly 62%. So you see, it's, um, <laughs> I think in my opinion, that's more of a publicity. You know, the, the, the Chinese really know how to manipulate the public opinion. They're the master of um, man mind manipulation. And so the Chinese media um, came up with this, this narrative, which has been uh, picked up and repeated by mainstream media in the United States as well. It basically said, I'm reading you kind of a translation from the Chinese media. It says, um, well, the Chinese media celebrated the new milestones, the many milestones that Chinese auto companies accomplished um, last year. And so this includes BYD became the world's first new energy vehicle company selling over 3 million vehicles in a year. China's exports of new energy vehicles reached 1.2 million, um, an increase of 77% over the previous year, a historic high. The country sold 9.5 million electric vehicles, presenting 32% of total new vehicles sold, uh, which is basically it's saying that one in three new cars sold in China was an EV last year. And China also overtook Japan and became the world's largest auto export country by exporting nearly five, five million cars. Um, so, so all the buzz about um, Tesla is going to lose to, you know, BYD. Um, so because of all the publicity, since then, Tesla's stock has dropped 30% year to date, um, while BYD's stock remained flat. Um, earlier in the year, Te Elon Musk came out to warn that Chinese EV firms could demolish automakers around the world. Um, and then at the end of the at the end of Q1 came another Chinese competitor, Chinese cell phone maker Xiaomi, released its first EV car called the SU7. Um, with attention grabbing exterior that looks like a Porsche um, and a price tag under which is cheaper than a Tesla Model 3, the company received 10,000 orders within four minutes. And in less than 30 minutes, it sold 50,000 cars. Suddenly, Tesla faces not just one, but two major Chinese competitors. Um, so Tesla is an American EV maker, while BYD is a Chinese company. Their competition is the epitome of US, US China competition, um, which is a, it's a competition that, the, that China had no chance of winning uh, given its political system if the US didn't indulge in wishful thinking. Okay, so let me give you a little history, um, just very quickly. Chinese government started uh, to offer subsidies to EV companies as early as 2009. Now, different from the U.S. subsidies, which are offered to customers, most of the Chinese subsidies were offered to manufacturers. CCP's own data or, or CCP's own publicity uh, declare that the central government has spent 150 billion yuan, which is about 22 to 23 billion dollars in 13 years, and that's central government. And so local government subsidies are um, at least as much. And that's only the official numbers. The real numbers could be could be much higher. Um, and so it was said that the highest amount a manufacturer can receive is 120,000 yuan a car per car. 
and that's even more than the cost of you know the, the 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 cost of manufacturing so this created fake ev companies that made fake ev cars uh with the purpose to defraud government subsidies and that that's the source of chinese ev graveyard um so as the chinese ev market was you know geared towards you know defrauding government subsidies or making monies um Elon Musk went to China to set up his gigafactory. I'm not saying that there weren't good Chinese EV companies. There were, um, but they, they were not what, it, what they are now today. Um, so when Elon Musk went to China to set up his gigafactory, um, he was given the privilege of being allowed to have a wholly owned company in China. In return, Tesla must have its supply chain in China. In another word, Beijing wants Elon Musk to help build China's EV industry supply chain, and Musk agreed. He benefited from his Shanghai Gigafactory and made money, but he also nourished um, his competitors, right, um, tremendously. So, and and then. Leading the pack is BYD, a company backed by Warren Buffett's capital and the Chinese government. Um, and then the, the very company that's threatening Tesla's dominance in the industry, or perhaps even existence in the long run. So now Musk must have realized that very few companies in the West can fairly compete with Chinese companies because they are backed by the state. Right? This is an unfair competition. Um, so with that said, now let's talk about, let's compare Tesla with um, BYD. The first factor in the competition is the political factor. Um, I mean, there are, I realize this type of analysis, I mean, to do a comprehensive analysis, I would have to spend a week, you know, studying everything, trying to be as inclusive as possible. But the things that I'm going to tell you are, are, are things that I don't think other media outlets have talked about. Um, so, but that doesn't mean that they are the only issues pr uh, that these EV ma makers face, right? So I'm just telling, telling you some of the things that I see that are not being discussed. So the first factor in the competition is the political factor for both um, Tesla and BYD, but they're different. Um, well, Tesla, the, the, the biggest challenge Tesla faced in China is the Chinese government. However, it has another challenge that's its relations with the left-leaning American gov government and mainstream media. Um, the left-leaning mainstream American media uh, are not on Tesla, not on Elon Musk's side for his political views and for his friendliness, perhaps towards Donald Trump and the like. Uh, many of the media reports covering the competition on Tesla and BYD are cookie cutter pieces coming straight from China. For example, the Chinese media boasted BYD's 3 million car sales last year as a major milestone, way ahead of Tesla's 1.8 million cars. However, that's an apple to orange comparison because BYD's 3 million includes 1.4 million hybrid EVs, right? So in terms of pure EVs, BYD is behind Tesla by about 200,000 cars because BYD made 1.57 million and Tesla made 1.8 million cars. But if you Google how many pure EV cars BYD produced in 2023, you'll get 3 million. I mean, I tried to find, I tried, I Google so hard this afternoon <laughs> trying to find how many pure EV cars BYD produced in 2023 in English. I couldn't get an answer. Every media reports is telling me 3 million, 3 million. And I eventually found the number in Chinese. If I do the same search in Chinese, I was able to find it. So at least to me, the Chinese media outlets were more honest with how many cars BYD made. And the English media were, were not saying, we're not 
you know, being, well, at least Google search was not being accurate. So, and then I scrolled out on the Google search results and I couldn't find the correct number. Um, so this shows you that the leading narratives in the United States want the public to believe that Tesla has fallen so behind than BYD. Um, but is that really the case? Um, now, BYD's geopolitical risks have been, you know, it faces, ha has been, or have been sufficiently professed, like it's facing, ta you know, tariffs and resistance from, from around the world. Uh, it's facing probe in Europe into its, um, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the unfair pricing. I mean, what do you call that? The gov the, uh, the, 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 uh, the 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 high government subsidies that it re that it received uh, to to help reduce its price. So th those have been widely discussed by mainstream media. I won't cover that. But however, there's another hidden political risk. Now, you know, the EV industry in China is overcrowded, and competition is so intense that that it's getting a little out of control. When the Chinese compete with each other, they are ruthless. Um, Tesla is in its own category in China, and the rest of the Chinese EV makers are in another category, right? So uh, I think Tesla enjoy its own category because, I mean, it. Th there are a group of consumers in China who would pay a premium for a Tesla car because it's a Tesla. Um, um, it's telling me my camera has limited battery, but it should be fine. <laughs> okay, tech, another technical challenge. Anyways, so, but all the other, you would think that all the other Chinese um, EV makers will get together and compete with Tesla, but that's not the case. Instead, they will compete with each other. Um, so when, when, uh, Xiaomi, when Xiaomi, uh, came out with its new car, the, the SU7, people say, ah, uh, BYD's biggest competitor is not going to be Tesla. It's going to be Xiaomi. Um, another story that came out in March was on or around March 10th, the CEO of another EV, Chinese EV maker, called Song San, exposed online that the founder of BYD, Wang Chuanfu, the legendary Wang Chuanfu, who is a CCP member, had two children um, out of wedlock, and both children are American citizens. And they own um, like real estate, prime real estate in, uh, actually I have a I have an image of that. Here, here's the guy exposing on, inter on internet with his ID, um, um, saying that, yeah, the, the, the founder of BYD has two, I think they're grown children. They're not like, young children, they're, they're grown. Uh, and these, and, and they have, they're Americans and they have properties in, in, uh, in the US. So, you know, this doesn't sound politically correct. Um, recently, you know, the CCP has mobilized the little pinks, the patriotic uh, Chinese youth, to launch attacks on large national private brands for any affiliation with the West or with Japan. Remember the the owner of the, the wealthiest man in China, the the guy who owns the uh, it's called the Nongfu Shanquan, the the spring water guy, the guy who owns the water brand in China. He was so uh, viciously attacked for something that's related to to Japanese culture. People were boycotting his product, you know. Um, so from that perspective, so how do you know BYD, you know, will not be boycotted one day if the owner has direct families that are, that are Americans? And how do you know BYD can be trusted when the regime needs it to beat out an American competitor, 
right? And don't laugh. This is not the logic that that we follow. This is the logic the CCP has instilled in the minds of the Chinese people. So BYD's Chinese competitors or anyone who is resentful of BYD could use that against it. And that's, I mean, it's very possible. And when it's loud enough, it will get Xi Jinping to think, hmm, do I really trust that BYD guy? <laughs> you know, and then, and then the fact that you know he had finance backing from from a, from 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 the legendary American <laughs> capitalist, you know Warren Buffet. It can all go wrong politically for for BYD. So, so this is this is the type of political risk um, that that could be that could come back and haunt BYD one day, given the way China is going, right? Um, the next thing I want to talk about is operations. Um, one Chinese writer compared BYD to Tesla by saying this. It says, Tesla's market value is $551 billion, seven times that of BYD's, which is 80, about $80 billion. Tesla's profit is 2.6 times of BYD. Tesla's profit per employee is 12 times that of BYD. Um, I updated the numbers to reflect the 2023 financial results. If you if if, if you plug in 2022 data, the the disparity between the two companies is, was um, was even higher. So Tesla has 128,000 employees worldwide. BYD has 570,000. You know, more than four times more. It has 70,000 R and D staff, and that's more than half of Tesla's total global employees. Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory has 20,000 workers. They make one million cars in a year. That's 50 cars per person on average. By comparison, BYD employees, on average, make three cars in a year. So the operation efficiency is vastly different. So you may wonder why. Well, other than, you know, the company one, you know, I mean, there, there are many reasons to explain that, but one primary reason um, is Tesla's manufacturing process is the, the, the manufacturing philosophy or the manufacturing um, approach approaches are different. So Tesla's manufacturing process is basically assembling the many components purchased from various suppliers. So for example, the batteries come from CATL, LG, and Panasonic. Uh, Tesla's motors are self-developed, but they are produced by two Taiwanese suppliers. So the Shanghai factory is responsible for assembling and not manufacturing. Battery installation is said to be the most critical part of the process, and the number of workers involved in, in doing that in Shanghai at the Tesla factory is no more than 1,000. BYD, however, employs a vast many, uh, a vast army of people because it manufactures most of the components itself, except for windshields, tires, and some um, intelligent hardware. Almost all components are self-produced. Um, UBS in Europe once had reported that 75% of BYD's dolphin, dolphin models were produced by BYD itself. So in an ideal world, BYD's model is more friendly to quality control because um, because the the it has control because the manufacturer has control over the entire manufacturing process right in, in an ideal world. However, in China, I think this approach is actually uh, riskier. This is because in it, it's the opposite of uh, West in a Western operation that that would be. The norm, right? When you control your own manufacturing process, then it should be, you know, you have a better uh, control over quality. I mean, you have better quality control. But in China, it's, I think it's worse. It's more prone to problems. Well, think about it this way in CCP's highly centralized culture, 
Today's Chinese are not known to be good at overseeing and coordinating large-scale, um, sophisticated industrial processes, and that's why China, China's industrial software applications are very behind, um, uh, you know, other countries like the United States. It's not because China doesn't have great. Um, software engineers. In fact, it has many great software talents, but large uh, industrial software applications require collaboration from different teams of experts, and so and there and and it's a long process. So the 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 this very narrow um, centralized approach to problem solving is cannot handle that kind of process. So I don't think today's Chinese. Are good at overseeing and coordinating large-scale, complicated industrial processes, particularly in an economic downtime when people are not well paid or not or not well motivated. In the summer of 2023, BYD Changsha facility had an exodus of employees um, because they were un they were unhappy about their pay. Their base. Pay was only 1950 yuan. Um, that's like basically the minimum salary in the city. Um, and the base salary is less than half of the base pay of workers as Tesla Shanghai factory. Now, base pay, you know, and the, people compare the paycheck, like I think in uh, Tesla, in Tesla Shanghai factory, people make, you know, like twice as much. Um, like if if uh, if the Chinese fa worker in BYD makes four thousand, then you know like Tesla factory workers will make like twice as much. Um, so Tes so BYD is a company not known to pay its employees well, or at least from from the um, from the media re reports we've seen. Uh, its Vietnam factory also had employee protest, uh, I think it was last year, uh, and they demanded higher pay. Um, so some people call BYD factories sweatshops, I mean sweatshops. Now think about it. Sw the sweat, sweat, sweatshop, the sweatshop model may work for making low-cost gadgets or clothing. Um, but the sweat sweatshop model or mentality does not work when you make sophistic sophisticated machineries. It's prone to quality issues. Um, so there have been many cases of battery fires um, surrounding BYD cars, but state media in China remained quiet. Some individuals have talked about BYD battery fires. According to an article on a Chinese auto website called PC Auto, in the month of May 2023 alone, BYD had 16 cases of battery fires. Uh, and the worst is that in some cases, the doors and windows uh, remained locked or you cannot open them, and the operator couldn't get out. Imagine the casualty when when your when the car is on fire and you are locked in. You cannot open the the the, the door just doesn't open. The window doesn't open, and so this person really just said, "What you know?" Um, I mean, the, I will provide the links. I had many great uh, reference links for this for this talk, and they're <laughs> interestingly they're all from mainland China. You know the, the mainland Chinese have done a lot of comparisons between BYD and and uh, Tesla. So I'll provide the links to you after this talk. So now, if similar things, if if Tesla had one fire in China, it would be all over the news. Uh, <laughs> but BYD has has had many cases of fire, but not a lot of people talk about it. Um. So Tesla's manufacturing model relies on suppliers, and it has effectively decentralized uh, QC concerns, right? You manage your quality control issues by managing your suppliers. And I think this model works better in China's environment. Um, 
versus BYD is highly centralized. I produce everything in my shop. I think BYD will be producing EVs much cheaper than Tesla, but its quality issues will be uh, can be concerns when it's when um, when. BYD increase its exports because those quality issues cannot be hidden anymore once it's there in once they're in the foreign in foreign markets. All right, now let me talk about market shares. So in 2023, Tesla had 10% of the Chinese EV market, while BYD had 30%. Tesla had 55% of the US market, while BYD isn't in the US yet. BYD sold 92% of its cars in the Chinese market. So the bulk of BYD's revenues from um, came from its came from the Chinese market last year. Now, with its declining economy, um, and and the I really question the growth. You know, I mean, I don't have numbers to back up my claim, but I really question the kind of extraordinary growth BYD had in China last year uh, with its domestic domestic sales. Um, that's just a question I have in my mind. I haven't got time to look into that. So any of you who have knowledge in this area can share your insight with me. I just, I mean, if you look at all the other industries, it seems to be flat if not down, but where, where, you know, who were buying so many EV cars last year? Um, but anyways, but with the, the extreme weather people experienced last winter um, and then the bad experience with, uh, with the batteries and then the amount of fires that we've seen in China, I don't know if that kind you know, that kind of growth in China, that kind of domestic growth is sustainable for BYD. So BYD desperately needs to expand its um, foreign markets. So its exports in 2023 increased from 2% previously to 8% um, of its total sales. So in the past, 98% of BYD's sales were dom domestic. Only 2% were exports. Now it increased that 2% to 8%. And that's 240,000 vehicles in 2023. Most of these cars were sold to Southeast Asia. That's what the Chinese media said. Um, because it, it said, they say that BYD has 26% of the Southeast Asian market. Tesla's popularity in Southeast, Southeast Asia is just picking up. Um, it, it definitely hasn't sold as many cars as um, BYD has. But in Google search, Tesla ranked number five among all automakers. And this Chinese writer believe it's quite remarkable. Um, and in Hong Kong and, and Singapore, Tesla is the most searched car. Uh, BYD's total sales to Europe was 13,000 cars in 2023, which isn't too much which isn't much compared to Tesla. Tesla's Model Y was the best-selling car across Europe in 2023 with 250,000 units sold, and its Model 3 sold 101,000. Um, now, what I want to show you is um, in 2023, Russia was China's biggest destination in terms of car export. I want to sh uh, share this with you. So this is a, a, a chart coming from the, chi the Chinese side. I don't know if I you can see this, yeah. You see, this is based on the sales volume for the first 10 months of 2023. Russia, uh, with the number is, uh, the unit measure is one, is 10,000, is not thousand. So the 73.6 means seven, 736,000, okay? Um, so for the first 10 months of 2023, China exported 736,000 cars to Russia. And that's not just EV, that's all cars. Followed by Mexico, Belgium, Australia, what what else? I can't see the image. I mean, you guys can recognize the 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 the, the country by the map. And then oh, and then UK, and then Saudi Arabia. 
uh, and then the Philippines. Okay. Um, oh, the pink is uh, traditional cars. The blue is EV cars. Okay, so for example, Belgium, Belgium, the bulk of uh, the cars were uh, EV cars, right? So the blue is EV, the pink is traditional, is traditional cars. Um, and then look at the exporter. This is the top 10 auto exporters, Chinese auto exporters published by China's, um, I think it's Passengers Association. Uh, what is it? I can't really see because my, my, my camera blocked my own slide. <laughs> so um, you see how uh, BYD ranks what? Oh, no, sorry. Pink. Pink is... Um, 2023, the first 11 months of 2023. And then the blue is the first, uh, is 2022. So this is, this is total cars. This is not broken down by EV or not. This is total cars uh, by manufacturers. And it's the blue is 2022 and the pink is 2023. Um, yeah. So, so you see how Tesla ranked number five uh, and then BYD rank number seven. So in terms of total number of cars made in China that were export to other parts of the world, uh, Tesla is ahead. Um, so, and then Chinese are saying that um, their projection of the Russian market is huge. Um, China's export car auto export to Russia grew 700%. And Chinese car brands, uh, it's mar the market share of Chinese auto brands in Russia was only 9% in 2022. It grew to 37% in a year. Um, and Russia jumped from, uh, ranking number 11, the 11th, uh, 11th largest destination country, um, uh, you know, that receive that, that import cars from China to number one. And according to a Russian estimate in 2024, Chinese cars will saturate Russian market and may reach 80%. And EV cars that the Chinese sells in Russia, for example, the NIO, uh, uh, I think it's, no, I think it's, it's Lee Auto. Uh, for example, the car uh, was selling at 450 yeah, 450,000 yuan in China, but the price in Russia is double. So the Chinese is making a lot of money in Russia. Um, so that's what I will say. I think this is interesting. I think the, I think overall the Russian market and then the South East, uh, South East, South East Asian market have helped, um, um, BYD. Um, Last but not least, I want to quickly mention the challenges that Xiaomi presents to Tesla. Uh, after its initial, uh, after the initial frenzy of, you know, buzz, uh, now people are talking about the quality issues that Xiaomi cars have. And, um, and I think the consensus is that Xiaomi is a cell phone uh, cell phone maker and Chinese cell phone makers are very good at marketing. They know they're, they're the marketing gurus. They know how to sell uh, a cell phone. However, you can use the same marketing uh, 
tactic to sell a car because what people are looking for is different. I mean, you could sell a cell phone by telling people how cool it is, you know, by you know focusing on some of its features. And people may be drawn to it, particularly young people. But cars, people look for safety, right? So now the the Xiaomi, there are like various sorts of um, safety concerns that have surfaced, um, and such as the, its brake and um, and and something else. So there's I saw there's like a list of nine safety concerns people have with um, Xiaomi cars. So. I think they don't pose as much of, of a threat to Tesla as BYD. All right, so that's just my <laughs> gathered information given the limited time I have. I hope this is helpful. Um, that's all. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right, let me see. Crunch the Grace Hopper. Number 67 from Newport Beach, SoCal, Southern California. Catching up from 10 minutes back. All right, well, thank you, Crunch the Grace Hopper. Hello, okay. All right. Brian Cowell. Well, thank you, Brian. I. I'll I will post, there were at least four or five links. Uh, I think the Chinese have really done a very good uh, analysis. Uh, and, and I think some of, I mean, they, they do, overall, they maintain a, to, a tone, uh, the, the correct political narratives that are more in favor of BYD. But if you really read through, read through the details and the data they provide, there are a lot of good points. So I will provide the links. And there were like four or five links that I used um, so that those of you who read Chinese can, 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 can use them as references. But I cannot find the same information in English here. All right. Okay, I don't think I have a lot of questions. I, I won't take any questions tonight because I do have um, other things I need to take care. I thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you later this week. Thank you. Bye-bye.